I've had so many cruises cancelled because of this. Yes. I've got enough credit. I'll soon be able to buy my own cruise ship. Yes. In September, I've got Spain booked. Right. In October, I have got Morocco booked. In November, I have got another Spain booked. And in December for Christmas, I have got a cruise. So I am... One of them will come up. I mean, I'll be honest, my husband's even booked Greenland for 2022. You're desperate. You're single-handedly revivifying the UK economy just with your holiday choices. But here's the thing. If you, let's say the cruise to Spain goes ahead and the quarantine is still in place and you get off the boat and you go into Spain, will you be quarantining for two weeks when you come back? No. But then I have to tell the police. Oh, yeah, but your last call, is she wanted to dodge somebody in. I mean, I don't what, know. What do what you think the quarantine is for, Jennifer? Just in your own words, why do you think it's there? James, I... I'm going to insist that you answer the question. I know it's to protect people. From what, Jennifer? To protect people from what? From COVID-19. And how many people have died? How many people have died of COVID-19? Do you know what I'd like you to... You know the deaths of people from COVID-19... Three of my friends, because I'm don't older. Don't give me a weird right-wing conspiracy No, theory. no, 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 no. Oh, Two cancers and one heart condition, and on their death certificates it all said COVID-related. That was just three people I know have lost somebody during this period. Yeah, you, they you, didn't have COVID, they weren't even tested. But, that's, ju- that's simply not possible. Okay, look, please look into that, because you're good uh, at no, looking into Jennifer, I'm, not, I'm looking into you at the moment. I want you. So you think that you don't need to quarantine because the risk has been exaggerated, as, Listen, as the death I toll around a... the world. I know, I, do you know oh. what? I, I, I'm not going to fall out with you. I still like you, but this isn't funny anymore. I'm sorry. This is really irresponsible. Please take more care of yourself and your husband, because, you know, even if, even if you don't care about anybody else... Other people care about you. The rules are there for a reason. The quarantine is there for a reason. We're having a conversation about people who may fray around the edges. You're retired, right, Jennifer? Oh, of course. I was like, so you don't even need to go to much. work. You don't even need to go to work. I mean, it'd be easy to quarantine. Please, this isn't funny. This isn't like another radio phoning topic where someone comes on a bit contrary and we all have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a ding dong and then we agree to disagree. It's just, it's just really stupid, Jennifer, and profoundly dangerous. Please, please have a little think. Whatever happens in the next few days, it's going to be bad. Brexit was meant to make our lives better, right? It, it, especially if you bought into the metropolitan elite nonsense that was perpetrated by people like Jacob Rees-Mogg who went to Eton. Put that on the list, will you? That's again something that really should have been a much louder alarm call than perhaps we registered it as being at the time. People who went to Eton describing people who didn't as being members of the metropolitan liberal elite. Quite incredible. But we are where we are. The, the Very, very simply, you were promised an improvement to your life. That's just a fact. You were promised improvements to your life in every measurable area in the short term and hopefully not too long, hopefully the shortest of short terms. Another one for the list when they started saying we'll see the economic benefits in 50 years time. Oh, okay, that's fine if you've got a few quid in the bank. But if you're already on Struggle Street, taking an economic hit for the next 50 years could be the difference between sinking and floating. So I, I, I fully understand that I am not the best person to be leading this quest but i still want to be part of it hopefully somebody else can lead it god knows who though but i still want to be part of it because i hate seeing how angry and how bitter people are and i hate the knowledge that they've been made that way nobody's born like that nobody's ended up like that by accident it's a conscious and deliberate effort to enrage you with false information so for example now you're supposed to get cross with the national trust because it wants to put his, the history of historic house of a historic house in the actual historic house. So the same people that led you to this madness also want you now to be anti-history. The National Trust suggests it might start providing more information about the history of the house that you're actually in. And you don't have to reach far to find a Daily Telegraph columnist to say, well, if they want to find out the history of the house they've actually paid to visit, they should just buy a guidebook. And how bonkers do you have to be to buy into that and i'm afraid it's not confined to the comment section of the daily mail anymore like it was when i started this job it's basically the credo 
of the Conservative Parliamentary Party. It's full of people who believe this stuff. People who believe that if you give food vouchers to the parents of hungry children, they'll spend them in brothels and crack dens. This actually now gets said in public by politicians. This is what Brexit has done to us. Because until you acknowledge that they were wrong, I'm not even going to say lying, until you acknowledge that they were wrong, they will carry on. So you have huge objections to the fact that there's not going to be an audience sing-along at an event that doesn't have an audience. To go back to the last night of the proms, just stop and listen to my words, Ken and everybody like Ken. They're trying to make you angry about that now. There's no audience sing-along at an event that doesn't have an audience. They're pu publishing the history of a house in the actual house. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist movement that wants to defund the police and everybody who believes that Black Lives Matter or that racism exists are somehow calling for a collapse of civilization. These are just lies. It's just not true. What have you done this week? Oh, I've been sticking up for the football fans that actually boo the anti-racist endeavours on the pitch. You've been doing what? I've been sticking up for the, for the football fans that boo the anti-racist endeavours on the actual... Okay, right. And where did you stand on the Brexit vote? It's not exactly difficult to, to knit it together, is it? What, what have you been doing? I'm very, very opposed to feeding hungry school children during the school holidays. And how did you vote during the Brexit campaign? You see, they've just turned the anger that you were directing at Brussels, now that you are slowly waking up to the fact that Brussels didn't deserve any of that anger, they have to find new places to put it. Which is why they're telling you to get angry about there not being any audience sing-alongs at an event with no audience. It's why they're telling you that, that somehow British values are being undermined by actual history being published in an actual historic house. The history of the actual house. You see, surely, how low they hold you in their own regard if they think that you're that easy to manipulate. Cyclists. Could you imagine... Nigel flipping Farage now, talking about cycle lanes. The man who arguably did as much as anybody else to bring the entire country to the precipice of catastrophe, now getting paid by the Barclay brothers to wang on about cycle lanes. Are you going to let him do this to you? Are you going to take the anger that was fermented over decades and directed towards our friends, neighbours and allies in Europe, and now you realise that that anger was built on lies and nonsense? You're going to transfer it? You're going to let them transfer it to cycle lanes and audience sing-alongs and historic houses and the National Trust and Black Lives Matter? You're going to end up sticking up for the actual racists in the crowd, booing the footballers who want to take a knee? God forbid they should do any public expression of a desire to eradicate racism. What else is on the list? Anything else on that list already yet? Because these will be the new um, bendy bananas, you see. These will be the new three-pin plugs. At first glance, they can sound funny or even harmless. But then they get into the bloodstream of the nation and 10, 15 years later, almost everybody believes arrant nonsense. Utter gibberish. Complete bilge. Boris Johnson has become Prime Minister on the back of a career dedicated to publishing bilge. To lying about what the European Union member... You never would have heard his name if he hadn't stumbled accidentally, having been fired from the Times for making up quotes from his own godfather and turning up on the Daily Telegraph, being sent to Brussels and stumbling upon a wonderful tactic for the Daily Telegraph readership that involved telling them lies about the European Union, selling them tickets for the ghost train, and then sitting back and counting the cash as everybody started screaming in horror and desperately trying to get out of the ghost train, where all the ghosts were made of papier-mâché and old egg boxes. And now we're here. We're right up against it. They're not going to say sorry to you, are they? They're going to tell you to start getting cross about footballers. They're not going to say sorry to you. They're not going to say we, we, we messed this up. They're going to start encouraging you to get angry with the National Trust. They're not going to say sorry to you. They're going to tell you that... <sighs> School meal vouchers get spent in crack dens and brothels. They're not going to say sorry to you. They're going to tell you that cyclists are the new enemy and that Black Lives Matter is some sort of 
Uh, do you know what the best evidence is of, of the bogusness of that? Just ask them to name the people we should avoid. Next time you hear someone wanging on about Black Lives Matter while pretending that it's not actually the eradication of racism that they're spooked by, just ask them to name the people that we should avoid. So who, who is it then? Who, who are the fully paid up members and leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement? Because right now I'm looking at people like the owner of Colchester publishing a really powerful piece about why he doesn't want season ticket holders in his ground if they're going to boo the Black Lives Matter protest, the Black Lives Matter moment. Who, who are the leaders of this incredibly powerful group that is dedicated to dismantling democracy? Yeah, you see? They still treat you like idiots. They still think you're dumb. A little bit of xenophobic stoking, a little bit of poking, a little bit of provoking. And they'll just move your fury from Brussels and the European Union and Angela Merkel and, 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 and Michel Barnier. They'll move it from there and they'll stick it somewhere else. And it'll be just as dishonest. It'll be just as damaging and it'll be just as dangerous. But do you know what? They'll get richer. They'll get more famous. They'll get more pats on the back of the billionaires that own the newspapers that they write for while the whole country is unnecessarily and avoidably led into decline. And the final thing they'll do, those of us who mourn what we've lost, we're the ones that don't love our country enough, you see. Those of us who point at the bruises and say, why have we done this to ourselves? We're the ones that don't love ourselves enough. Those of us who point with laser-like clarity to every single thing I've just described to you as an appalling assault upon and affront to British people, British values and British history, they will accuse us of not being patriotic. And it's up to you and it's up to Ken and it's up to every single one of us to decide whether we're going to let them get away with it again. This is quite difficult for me to talk about because it's something that I'm quite ashamed about. I'm uh, a white guy from a rural area. Um, and, you know, when I was between the ages of 13 to 15, I was quite a racist person. Um, well, maybe even older. And, yeah. you know, the... Um, there's, the no consequences. there's no shame in, 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 in that. I'm working, well, yeah. on, working on the presumption that you're not anymore, Charlie. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. this call's going to go off in a very interesting yeah. direction. I, I think, I, I, you know, I felt compelled to ring in, and I'm actually trying, uh, although I'm a terrible writer, to, to write about it. And oh, yeah. if that goes anywhere, they're great. But the lack of education that I received on it and the influx of... Um, media influence kind of turned me into, you know, even though I had parents who spoke, you know, of love and compassion mm. and, you know, taught very strongly against this, um, you know, I was a, I, in, I was a paper boy. Um, yeah. And every single day I would read the papers as I was going around. Um, and you, every single day you'd hear negative things in the newspapers about black, uh, young black kids yeah. specifically and, and Muslims. And it turned me into this horrible, horrible person. Um, Gosh. You know, and, and really, I think, you know, what is maybe not highlighted enough um, is the fact that, you know, a lot of in these very rural communities, when I went to school, we never went to a mosque. You know, we ne never went to a synagogue. Mm. We never had the opportunity to visit or um, people of different colors or people of different faiths. You know, there was one black person in my entire school and he was a teacher um so the lack of awareness and the lack of meeting other people and it was only through you know me going to sixth form yes and then university and actually meeting people and engaging and having conversations but you know i, I actually have you know empathy for some of the individuals you know back in my hometown who haven't had the opportunity to no, but this is out. it, Charlie. This is it. And this is why you, you, you 
don't be too hard on yourself because I, I realized a few years ago and, and doing this job was part of the process that you you were the ripest. You were the low hanging fruit. You're the easiest. Mm. If I want to persuade someone that all the immigrants or all the black people or all the Muslims are coming over to um, to take our jobs or to, 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 you know, steal our money or to then the easiest people to persuade are the people who have next to no experience at all of the individual's that are being generalised about and described. The, the numbers support it. The areas with the lowest levels of immigration have the highest concerns about the impact of immigration. The areas where we all live happily alongside each other generally record the lowest levels of, of mm. concern about immigration. So you simply needed to meet people in order to see that they were essentially just like you and no more represented by criminals and terrorists in the newspaper than you would be represented by white criminals and terrorists in the newspaper. It's interesting when I, um, you know, when I kind of, I, I, you know, I almost got involved in, you know, the BNP movement. Um, okay. I didn't in the end just purely because I couldn't, I didn't have a bike to be able to get to the meetings. <laughs> interesting. And, you know, if my parents ever knew that I had gone, you know, they would have absolutely murdered me. So all that but, stood between you and signing up to a racist organisation was the lack of a, of a rally chopper. But I, 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 you know, I think it's important to, <laughs> yes, to, to point out why, because... I was someone who, you know, I went to, a, you know, a, a very underfunded school. Yeah. I got bad grades and I had zero self-worth, absolutely zero. Yeah. And then this group of people said to you, t said to me, don't worry that you're, you know, that you aren't good in your education. Don't worry that you have low self-esteem. You are inherently better. You are an inherently better person purely because of your nationality and because of your skin color. Yeah. And that to a lot of young, especially rural, but not, you know, specifically young white kids is a huge lure because, yeah. you know, if you can, if you can suddenly find this self-worth where you are not only better than every other person of a different skin color, but you're better than every other white person in the world because you're English and you are, better than every other Englishman because you're standing up for this cause that you adamantly believe in, yeah. you're suddenly elevating yourself and your self-worth above thousands, hundreds, and sorry, hundreds, you know, millions of other people. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, you were the lowest of the low, but in your own head, you know, you... Well, everybody, I mean, it makes you feel special and nothing else in yeah. your in your life at that time did make you feel special quite the opposite in fact most of it made you feel as you say worthless no self-worth mm. and someone comes along and goes well you're better than them and not only are you better than them but they're coming for what little you've got yeah exactly and Gosh. you know you, you you've got to you know i think people are you know and i saw it in the aftermath of i'm actually thankful for the experience in yes. a way, because in the aftermath of brexit i can remember going on to um, Facebook mm. and all of my, you know, apparently very liberal friends were in, in a disguise, basically saying, you know, all these working class people are stupid, yeah. they're idiots, they're bigots. What people need, and I think it's so important to understand, is that if you haven't been given the opportunity to integrate, if you haven't been given this education that, you know, a lot of my London friends had. Absolutely. Um, how are you how are you to know and and who's going to help you? How, and and where's the and, corrective you've got all the people pouring poison into your ear whether whether it's conscious or not the headlines that identify the ethnicity of a criminal but never the ethnicity of a good samaritan where's the alter, where's the counterbalance to that who's mm. who's whispering in there where's the angel on their right shoulder to counterbalance the the little devil on their left shoulder charlie i i really implore people to rather than shout racist rather than shout idiot rather than shout stupid or bigot to try and realize that you know if you have that privilege of understanding if you know i have quite bad adhd i find it really hard to just sit down and read a book you know if sure. you are someone who has the privilege of being educated you have be aware the of duty it. you have the, i i do feel you have the duty to educate other people and I'd educate other people uh, with, with one caveat I, Charlie what a lovely call I'm so grateful to you I, I'm very late for the break it's the only reason I'm moving on and, and for people who are prepared to take Charlie's advice do be aware that even if you do all of the things he says then the purveyors of poison will still accuse you of calling everybody stupid and racist and bigoted even when you bend over backwards every day not to because that's another way in which they get to well um, 
continue the brainwashing, keep the poison in the bloodstream. Somewhat strangely, perhaps, for a radio phone-in programme, I thought I'd begin by reading you a couple of letters. One was written to a chap called Stanley Johnson, you, you may have heard of him, and one, of course, was written to you by a chap called Boris Johnson. We'll, we'll begin with that one, which dates from the end of March. I am writing to you to update you on the steps we are taking to combat coronavirus. In just a few short weeks, everyday life in this country has changed dramatically. We all feel the profound impact of coronavirus, not just on ourselves, but on our loved ones and our communities. I understand completely the difficulties this disruption has caused to your lives, businesses and jobs, but the action we have taken is absolutely necessary for one very simple reason. If too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to cope. This will cost lives. We must slow the spread of the disease and reduce the number of people needing hospital treatment in order to save as many lives as possible. That is why we are giving you one simple instruction. You must stay at home. You should not meet friends or relatives who do not live in your home. You may only leave your home for very limited purposes, such as buying food and medicine, exercising once a day and seeking medical attention. You can travel to and from work, but should work from home if you can. A letter from Boris Johnson to you. This is a letter from Martin Hammond, the master in college at Eton, to Stanley Johnson, dated the 10th of April 1982. Stanley Johnson, in the unlikely event that you haven't heard of him, is the father of the current Prime Minister. And this is what his master had to say. Boris really has adopted a disgracefully cavalier attitude to his classical studies. It is a question of priorities, which most of his colleagues have no difficulty in sorting out. Boris sometimes seems affronted when criticised for what amounts to a gross failure of responsibility and surprised at the same time that he was not appointed captain of the school for next half. I think he honestly believes that it is churlish of us not to regard him as an exception, one who should be free of the network of obligation which binds everyone else. Listen again to that final line. I think he honestly believes that it is churlish of us not to regard him as an exception, one who should be free of the network of obligation which binds everyone else. Back to the letter that Boris Johnson wrote to you at the end of March. That is why we are giving you one simple instruction. You must stay at home. You should not meet friends or relatives who do not live in your home. You may only leave your home for very limited purposes, such as buying food and medicine, exercising once a day and seeking medical attention. You can travel to and from work but should work from home if you can. Back to 1982. I think he honestly believes that it is churlish of us not to regard him as an exception, one who should be free of the network of obligation which binds everyone else. <clears throat> and then, last night, the Prime Minister of this country made a fool of every single human being who did what he asked of us. He made a mug of every mother, every father, every daughter, every son, every brother, every sister, every nurse, every doctor, every teacher, every paramedic who have done their level best in incredibly trying circumstances to pull together to prioritise the national interest over personal inconvenience and even misery. Boris Johnson stood before you and before me last night and demonstrated categorically, categorically, <laughs> that he still believes that it is churlish of us not to regard him as an exception, one who should be free of the network of obligation which binds everyone else. So where do we go from here? You, you, you will know that Boris Johnson has successfully misled 
not just, of course, the British electorate, but various employers, party leaders, colleagues and constituents throughout his entire life and career. I have, in recent weeks, almost given up reminding you about the man's track record, almost given up reminding you about the catalogue, the cavalcade of calumnies and corrupt conduct that typifies every single element of this individual. And today, you might have expected me to be engaging in an almighty I told you so, after my friend Majid Naz Nawaz very, very graciously allowed me to step back into the seat today when I was due to be on holiday. You might have thought I was coming here to, uh, I don't know, sound the trumpets of self-congratulation. I'm not. I'm sick to my stomach that at a time of unprecedented national and international danger, the leopard has still not seen fit to change his spots. And now we come to Dominic Cummings, about whom I know very little. I am familiar with his responsibility for steering the Vote Leave campaign to victory. Um, contingent, of course, he believes upon that massive lie about the NHS that was put upon the side of the bus. But that, that battle is over. Brexit is done and dusted. It is finished. I mean, the detail is still to be thrashed out, but the idea that we will not be leaving the European Union has been toast since the end of January. So we can park that completely. The interest now of any patriot, anybody remotely concerned about their neighbours, about their families, about their friends, about their community, about their country, the priority now is to ask why. Why? Why was he allowed to do it? And if he was really allowed to do it, why didn't they tell us that we could too? How long is it since you saw your mum? People have said goodbye to relatives via iPad because they did what Boris Johnson asked them. They acknowledged that single, simple line halfway through that letter he sent to every household in the country. That is why we are giving one simple instruction. You must stay at home. And we did. We stayed at home. I think for me, the moment my mum said, you know, son, it, it, it has occurred to me that I might not ever see you again. Now, my mum is given to a little bit of emotional exaggeration occasionally. But on that occasion, there, there was none of it. It was a genuine fear. And God knows, compared to so many, countless other families in the country, the inconvenience we have endured is as nothing. I've heard from people who couldn't attend funerals. I've heard from people, as I say, who were bidding farewell to relatives via their iPads. I've heard from people who haven't left their homes in weeks. And today, those people have been asked to close their eyes, put their fingers in their ears, and pretend that there was even the vaguest scintilla of truth in what Boris Johnson said on a live television broadcast to the people of the United Kingdom last night. Those people are being asked to ignore the evidence of their own eyes and ears. And at first glance, it seems to me that this time they won't. And those two words, this time, seem to me to be by far the most important. Because I don't care who you voted for in December. I don't care what you voted for in June of 2016. I really couldn't care less about the colour of the scarf that is knotted around your neck. I don't care where your political loyalties lie. I don't care which tribe you have allied yourself with over the last few years. And I don't care what you intend to do next time any questions are put to a ballot. I care only about the fact that we are currently in the midst of an absolutely unprecedented and murderous scandal. And the people in charge of it elected last night to seek to pull the wool over your eyes. Our death toll now. Our death toll now is almost too big to contemplate. The comparisons with how other countries have coped with this crisis are a humiliation, and yet still they spin. Still they prioritise public relations over public health. And the only abiding mystery left will solve itself in the blink of an eye. Why on earth would a government that has addressed the coronavirus crisis with almost unprecedented incompetence be so desperate to retain the services of a key advisor? On any rational planet, anybody, 
intimately involved with such a catastrophic governmental strategy would not be missed in a heartbeat. In any rational universe, they would not be sorry to see go a man widely regarded as the most powerful person in Downing Street. So why, when the UK government's response to coronavirus has been so catastrophic, the carnage in our care homes, the death toll up and down these islands, why would they be so desperate to keep a man in place who presided over it? Well, the answer is simple. Because his skill set, his gifts, his talent are for manipulating the public, for persuading them to do things that are against their own interests, to convince them to ignore the evidence of their own eyes and ears. I don't know if it will work this time, but I know that it worked last time, and I know that it worked the time before, and that's why I'm forgetting about those events, I'm forgetting about those elections, I'm forgetting about those referendums. You were given one simple instruction. Don't take my word for it, take Boris Johnson's. That is why we are giving one simple instruction. You must stay at home. Unless you're Dominic Cummings. I'm afraid I do not believe any of the figures that come from the mouths of the politicians or those that represent oh. the health industry. Why not, Keith? Because, James, they don't make any sense. Well, I, OK. Um... I, I don't think there's much to be gained from comparing their qualifications with mine or, or, or with yours. So let's move straight to the why of it. Why, why are they trying to lie to you? you well, think? I think that's that's the question that none of us can can answer. And well, I, I can, I can. Go on, but, but I'm interested in your answer. Okay, I I, I don't know. I don't know why. Well, you have to know because my answer is they're not lying. Your answer is yes, they are. So if you're the only you're, you're the only, only one got, that has to answer. You've to use it. your two eyes. Yes, go on. Um, the 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 that demonstrate that they're not telling the truth. Let's, how, let's, how? If you'll give me some time to, to explain... Well, I want the why of it first, if I, I may. Yeah, yeah. You what? can't get the why, because none of us know. But what, why, why, do why do you, do you think they're lying God? to you? Why, why, you know, there's, a lot, there's a lots and lots of reasons. Well, I just why do you to... think they're lying to you, Keith? That's all I want to know. That's not the question. I don't know, James. Right. But you're certain that they are? The facts tell me that they are. Yes. The facts through my eyes tell me that they Go are. Go on the then, give me a couple. Let, let me finish. The fact that in May... I just said give me a couple. That's an invitation to you to speak. In May, when everybody was on the beach and we were told there was going to be a major um, um, spike, nothing happened. Um, we are told to stay indoors. But, I'm indoors we, at the but, moment. But we weren't. Uh, th th there's been a second spike. We're in the middle of it now. We're in the, the, the death spike rate. The death of, rate. The James, no, we're no, on a second Keith, spike mate, of let's not fall out, Keith. The this death time of year, influenza. As as let's go back to 2017 and let's talk facts. In 2017, during the winter period of flu, there were 50,713 extra deaths caused by influenza. Yes. Did we close it down? Keith, these, no. These, these, these How many people die? Keith, of all COVID? right, let me try I've again. No idea let me try again. You, so you're convinced use. that they're lying, but you don't know why. Okay. I, I, I struggle to get past that point. The death rate this week has hit figures that we haven't seen since last May. So obviously, all of the efforts that we made to get infection rates down over that period worked. The, lo the lockdown worked. Otherwise... The figures wouldn't have gone back up again when we came out of it. I've got two questions for you. One might upset you a bit, but you but you upset me, James. Oh, that's all right. Well, why do you think you're so angry about something you can't explain? Why am I so angry? Because I, I feel that the government says one thing that it wants to protect the economy, that it, it, it's <clears throat> excuse me acting in our interests. Yes. It says one thing, but then does completely the opposite so but that doesn't stand up to scrutiny it because it says it wants to protect the economy and protect the population so you've fallen into that thinking that it's 100 percent one way can I, can I ask you one or, question all right not yet no be, right. because I'm, I'm still more, much more interested in what you think i know what i think um you, you did this it, the, the the bolus i can't get past is this absolute certainty that they're lying to you without the beginnings of an idea why they would want to and, th and that that for me is 
a big flaw in, 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 in where you are. And what I feel as a, as a fellow human is that I want to try and help you be less angry about something you can't articulate. So let's try again. Why would they want to lie to us? Just give me a theory. I, I, I've got no theory. Before, um, I heard Nick on the phone and he took Sharma, really did, to the cleaners. And I, I followed Brexit. I'm quite a strong Tory at the yeah, moment. Sure. And I, I wasn't aware that Australia deal and no deal were the same. Right, let, me, can, let me pause you there. And we're not yeah. going to fall out, right? But the second thing you said completely destroys the validity of the first thing you said. You said, I follow Brexit. You, you, you obviously, I nearly swore then, you obviously, <laughs> you obviously don't if you didn't realise that Australia well, star deal meant no deal. When you say you follow Brexit, you still follow the people who persuaded you it was a good idea. Well, yes, I do. Yeah. I don't, I've listened to the other side as well. Well, you can't have done, yeah. because it's been, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, like, it's like the Pope being a Catholic, Australia yeah, being the same as no deal. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're a lot cleverer than me. It's I, nothing I to do yeah. with being no, clever. But, no, but do you agree there must be a lot of people think like me? I don't know. I don't know. There must be, yeah, because it must yeah. work. So, I mean, listen, blame is a big word. Whose fault is it that you failed to understand something that I consider well, to be really, really straightforward, obvious and simple? Yeah. Well, I accept that obviously it's the government's fault and the people put it forward. Maybe I didn't listen to... Uh, hard enough to it but i'm sure there's a lot of people like me well i, who, I, I uh, applaud your honesty not, i'm sure there are yeah. and, and now you know it means exactly the same as no flipping deal at all how, how, how are you how are you feeling about the whole plan and the people in charge well yeah well the whole thing is just going difficult at the moment but i've always i've always wanted to get out of the uh, you know the european market because i want to be a sovereign state oh, but i do blimey. agree with, what do you think that you means know. let's not do this what do you think sovereign means well, I think we can make our own laws. But how do you do Jones. that if you're in a trade negotiation? If you're going well, to agree no. to some of the stuff you don't want in order to get it over the line with some of the stuff that you do want, what happens to sovereignty yeah. in that context? No, but once we get out, we can make our own laws and do exactly what we want. Of course we can't. Idea, not, not, not when it comes to trading with foreign countries. We can't do exactly what we want at all. We have to abide by the trading treaties that we have in place with them. And, th and signing that treaty involves what you would have to acknowledge. Uh, forgive me. Forgive me. Seriously, forgive me. If you understood <laughs> what sovereignty means, you'd realise that there's no such thing in the context that you've just described well I'm, that, that's I'm the next of... that's the next penny drop moment you finally realize that no deal means the same as australia deal and you're about to yeah. realize that sovereignty means signing up to things that are less than what you would get if you yeah. were 100 percent in charge of what you can get yeah but james obviously a lot of people did agree with me because 17 point so and so million people voted uh, for brexit they voted for people like Owen Patterson, who said only a madman would leave the market. People like Daniel Hannan, who said nobody's talking about leaving the single market. People like Michael Gove, who said no deal is not what we campaigned for. It's never been on the cards at all. People like Nigel Farage, who said, why can't we be like Norway? What? what how now, Brown Cow, yeah. after four years, can you still be coming out with this stuff, my friend? Everything well, has just, been proved yeah. wrong. They're, they're even patronising you today. Today they've said, oh, it's an Australia-style deal, and you've gone, oh, yeah, that sounds good, and then they've gone, it's semantics. They've pulled down your pants, and you're still defending them. Yeah, no, I didn't sound that sounds good. I was not aware, OK, you're going to have a go at me. And, like, I'm not going to have a go at you. you no, fair play to you for coming and that. taking your medicine, but I don't understand yeah. how you can not be. How often do you listen to me? Do you just think I've lied or that I'm thick or no, I've got it wrong actually, for four years? Actually, Jack, I hardly listen to you at all. Oh, there you go. There's the no, problem. And that's no, why you've ended up not knowing what's going on under your own no. nose, Peter. You silly, Wait. silly sausage. If you'd listened no. to me, you yeah. wouldn't be on national radio now saying, oh, my God, I've just been conned by the people I actually voted no, I, for. I didn't, I didn't actually say that at all. But, no. you know, I, I accept various things that you say. Uh, you know, but, you know, the fact is a lot of people voted for Brexit. It's you as simple as that. By that mate. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens in the next few months, won't we? Well, it's six weeks. Uh, Laurie six Parks weeks. in Kent, Portaloos, all down the side of the M20. People like you, decent, honest people like you, yeah. still thinking that Australia-style deal means something. What does it take? Well, no, it means a no deal. Well, basically, they say an Australian deal because it sounds a lot softer than a no deal. Which that's is, what Sharma said. And that's that's why they're patronising you, Pete. So why... Uh, Making me feel like I have to take this vaccination when I'm going to survive, regardless. Yes, because you might pass it on to people who don't. But, but if they've had the vaccination, then James, then surely they'll be fine. Well, how do they know? Unless everybody has it. But 
But then, but what's the problem if they've had it? I, there's there's no problem, mate. You're just it. not allowed in the pub. That's all. But but why not? I, I don't understand why they're being ostracised for not wanting something that's been only been tested for three months, four months. I'm, 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 well, I'm you're not. not you're I'm just not, not being allowed into places where you might give yeah, coronavirus exactly, so to people. I mean, ostracised. But if they've had the vaccine, then why am I not allowed in? Well, because they've had the vaccine and you haven't. Yeah, but if they're vaccinated, then they don't have to worry then, do they, James? No, but you're not allowed into the pub because you well, haven't because had the vaccine. Because if they let you in, Kyle, they'll have to let everybody else who hasn't had the vaccine in as yeah, well, no, and you'll then, all infect well, each other. Yeah, but I, I'm going to... I'm personally OK, let me, let me put it this way. It's to protect people who aren't clever enough to protect themselves. So you'd be in the pub without the vaccine, and under your well, rules, I, I, there'd I, be I, some... I, if you stop talking, I'll explain sorry, your God. misunderstanding, Kyle, and, and with great... Yeah. Gratitude, actually, for the opportunity to explain this to people like you. If you're allowed into the pub without a vaccine, then so is him, and so is he, and so is he, and so is her, and so is she, and so is... And you could all infect each other, you see? Yeah. I, 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 and then I'm you'd all need treatment, and some again. of you would be intubated, and some of you would go into okay. intensive care, and some but, of you would die. So it's to protect people who aren't clever enough to understand how they can protect fine. themselves. That's what, 0.5% of us that are going where, to... Where are you getting that, that number that from, Kyle? Not Because of that 9.5% survival rate. Yes, well, but where, 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 are you you from, from, where are you getting that number from? Where are you getting the death rate from, Jim? Where I haven't mentioned the death rate. rate. No, but I'm getting the same... I'm getting the same where from, Kyle? You're getting from. I'm no. getting it from uh, when I'm doing my research online. Yes, but Jim. where, mate? Because you can't say I'm getting it from the internet, right, can so you? You can you can buy moon cheese on the internet. Where exactly are you getting this 99.5% survival rate? Because it's a fact that is a nine point nine nine point five percent. Doesn't rate doesn't become a fact when you keep saying it. Fact. Just just refer me well, to the where's source. Your, where's your where's your where's your what is it that this virus is ninety uh, percent successful? I haven't, I haven't said that. I haven't used so any what, numbers yet on the pro- saying, Kyle. So I haven't said a number yet on the program today. So let's just concentrate on where you're getting your facts from. From from the research that I'm doing, James. Yes, you know, research you know, where into I what? Take the phone away from my ear, but to go on to the articles that I've read. Well, just name, no, you must have gone, oh, crikey, that looks good, that's come from Harvard, or blimey, that's from the Office of National Statistics, or that's from the World Health yeah, Organization. Not, I'll say it's from the World Health, I can't, I can't, I can't pinpoint my, where I've got my, what and, and, right and, now. and that is why, Kyle, we need to protect you from yourself, you see, which is what a vaccine would do. So you can stay at home, if you want, doing your research, but if you want to move into a public space where you might infect other people, I'm afraid you'll be prevented from doing so. Do you understand why now? But I can go out and, I can go out and mix with the public and do what I want and, um, and be fine with, with the 99.5% survival yes, but, rate. But, but, but you, you, you keep saying this number. You keep saying, what if I said now it's got a 100% death rate? And you said, where are you getting that number from? And well, I said, dead, my James. research. I'm getting it we're from my dead, research. No, only the people that we're have had it. Though, is it. Well, that's all a conspiracy, you see, Kyle, because I saw it on Facebook and there are a lot of people who are actually dead who are still walking around. Is there? Yes. I, I researched it on the internet. They're like zombies, and because oh, they've got right, these because, chips in them, you, because, Bill Gates is controlling them with a PlayStation 4 controller. Seriously. Just have the vaccine, man. On the question of what they've done to deserve the kind of abuse they get from the newspapers, do we, do we know? Do you know? Um, in, in terms of the abuse they get from the newspapers, the newspapers will pick up on anything just for sales. Yeah, but they haven't but, done that to Kate Middleton. So what, what, why have they well, done they it to did. this point? I mean, they, 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 were, they were quite ruthless with Kate Middleton. They weren't quite they ruthless. They, they yeah. poked a little bit of fun at her for not having a job, and, and yeah. they reported on the snobbery that she encounters in, in yeah. um, aristocratic circles because her mother was an air hostess. But yeah. um, they, they certainly didn't sort of doorstep her, her dad in the hope of getting him to say disgusting things about his own daughter. They didn't pay money to estranged family members from profoundly dysfunctional backgrounds. Okay. I mean, they went after Meghan Markle in a way that I... I I can't actually think of... I, I'd compare it perhaps to Britney Spears or Lily Allen. It was just quite... So do, do we know what they did wrong to, in, in the first um, place? But it, it, it's like your best friend marrying somebody who's totally dominated him. And so so how, how, where, where do you get this? So there we go. That's something I've read in, in, in newspapers yeah. written by ignorant people. Where, where are you getting well, no, your information the from? Newspapers. This is my own conclusion. So what, know, what's it based on? The Harry, idea that she totally dominates him. What, 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 how did you arrive at that conclusion? When, when did you arrive at that conclusion? Pretty, pretty early on. Oh, okay. Pretty, yeah. and, and what was the evidence for it? Um, deviation from royal protocol, I would think. No, the evidence for her totally dominating him. 
by by Harry deviating from royal protocol. For example, um, I mean, for example, the, the 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 photographs that would normally be expected after the birth. Pardon? Photographs that would normally be expected of of, of, of a new birth of a, Pho- a, a photographs baby. of the baby she'd just given birth to. Which has happened in every case previously. Yes, but you're talking about her dominating him. So you think he would have wanted to do it differently and she didn't let him with the photographs of the baby that she'd just given birth to. to. And you said it was pretty much from the start. No, no, no. You told me she dominates him. That's got nothing to do with royal protocol. He finds royal protocol presumably considerably more restrictive than she does because he's lived with it all his life. So where are you getting this evidence from that she totally dominates him? Because I've seen it a lot, particularly from people denying that their negativity is in any way racist. It's all to do with how pushy she is. So so show me, because I, I can't it, see it, it at the it, moment. It, it's to do with how pushy she is. Prince, no, well, that's what Prince I said. Harry, so, so where's the evidence? Prince, Prince Harry was, was the, kind of the saviour of the royal family. He, he's, he's the shining star. He, yes, got, yes, 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 yes. Where's the evidence that she, quote, totally dominates him, end quote? Because that's well, offensive fact, to both of them. The, the fact that in such a short time he's changed so, so completely. Well, we all change when we fall in love, particularly with people that make us want to be better than we were before we met them. So, so again, the evidence yeah, that we, she we, completely we, dominates. Just one little example before we bid farewell and you um, step back from national radio. Well, where's the evidence that she completely dominates him? Well, just a statement from yesterday that they want to step back from royal life. But where, where's the evidence that she completely dominates him, Steve? Well, that, that is the evidence. No, no it what, isn't. What, That's the evidence what, that they want uh, to step back from, so from royal life. What would there be? What they want to st- would there be? Steve, you just told me the reason. They want to step back from royal life. You told me she completely dominates him. And I, and I want to know. And I suggested that you might just have swallowed that line from ignorant journalism. And you were adamant that you hadn't. No, so you must no, have. No, no. So, so where why, does it come no, from? No, no, unlike you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So where. I've got experience. Where, where, yeah, you've no, got no, no, loads no, of experience. So where's the evidence that she completely you dominates have no him? No experience. I've got no idea all. about anything. That's why I'm asking you. Where, where's the evidence that she completely dominates him? Because of the statement from yesterday. There's no other possible explanation. Well, apart from the fact that they want to step back from public life. That's the other possible explanation. So you need to just give me one little nugget. of of, Because not least because you said it was obvious from the start. And now you're saying it's been obvious since yesterday. So leaving that embarrassment aside. No, 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 no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. I was here. I was listening. You said it's been obvious from the start. So what what is it based on? Your conclusion that she completely dominates him, Steve? The the, the complete change in his personality. Crikey, so you've known him all his life. Sorry? You've known him all his life. What's all... What's all of his life got to do with the statement? To be able to observe a complete change in his personality. I don't know if his personality has changed at all. When did you first meet him? So you've grown up... It's a simple question. When did you first meet him? I haven't met him. But but his personality has completely changed, and you're not basing that on anything you've read in the newspapers. So where are you getting it from? Where are you getting it from? I've followed him since he was born, as, as you probably well, I hope have. you haven't. There's, there's laws against that sort of thing. But, but where is the evidence, no, no, A, that his personality has completely changed, and no, B, yeah, that she completely yeah, dominates him? about something that you know nothing about. Exactly, that's why I'm asking you. I've experience you. from working within a royal family. Have you worked and within I'm, a royal family, Steve? You should have mentioned it. You're, you're knocking Boris, you're knocking the Conservatives. No, I'm not, it's, mate. No, you've completely it's, misunderstood. It's, I love it's, this it's, announcement. I think it's great news. It's at fault. Pardon? If the left wasn't so poor... If the Labour Party wasn't so poor, such a, a oh, terrible I completely alternative. agree with you. They're, they're not offering anything for people to vote to. I completely they turn up at a rally, sing his name, and yeah. now they're going to vote for the same again. They're no, I, 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 no I agree, but that's Starmer. just... But I agree. It's, I, de- it's demented. No, I know, but you said I'm knocking like. the Conservative Party. I'm not. I'm, I love this. This is brilliant. This is a really liberal immigration policy that lots of people thought wouldn't happen under Boris Johnson. Now, how do those people feel about being betrayed by him again? That's what I'm trying to get to the heart of, Gary. Well, yeah, but we don't care. He, that's what I mean. He could do what he likes because, at the end of the day, he could have another vote next week. He could have an election every week, and until the Labour Party offers an alternative, he could do as he pleases. He's sitting there rubbing his hands. He's loving it. Well, I agree. I, I com- completely I like. agree with you. But are you describing <laughs> yourself now as someone who doesn't care about fact or or, 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 or actual it's, promises? It, it's so bad. So Boris Johnson lies to you, and you say again, I've been I've been persuaded. Not right. persuaded. There's no persuasion. Of course there's persuasion. You'd I'll never heard of Jeremy Corbyn until someone told you about him. I'll vote for it. No, I, in I, a heartbeat. I, Gary, I, in a heartbeat. I, 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 listen, but mate, I don't think we're arguing with each other. You, you will vote for Boris Johnson regardless of what he does, what he says or what he stands for, because Jeremy Corbyn is such a wrong'un. 
not just Corbyn, the whole... Well, the whole Labour Party, they're all scumbags. Yeah, they're, 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 exactly. No, they're not scumbags. Oh, what, they're not, all right, sorry, mate. 600,000 members, they've yeah. got a huge membership, yeah. but they seem to feel like they are representative of the 60 million people in this country. And they're yeah. not, they're 600,000 people who have very strong views. You believe in that... But you, you realise what you've done. Dogma. And dogma. they're going to vote... For, for, for another well they're probably not one. but they're we're not we're not here to talk about them. we're not here to talk about it's the Labour Party mental. we're here to talk about why you like being lied to particularly about because immigration it's not that we'll suffer the people will we'll suffer Johnson because the alternative is so poor yes says you who know, we, I'm not I'm not a die-hard Conservative. I'll vote. Well, I'm not a die-hard Labour option. supporter under the current <laughs> regime, but I would ask but you which which awful. policy which policy were you most perturbed by. None of it really bothers me. No, 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 but the policy that that leads you to conclude... No, you've got to give me one. Sorry, mate, I'm going to labour this point, if you pardon the pun. Go on. Because here you are on national radio (laughs) explaining how you like being lied to by Boris Johnson because the alternative is so awful. That's it. Yeah, I know. So what policy was it? What what policy was it? And do you know what? Just because I'm feeling friendly, you can include Ed Miliband in this. So what policy was it? Have oh, any of God. the last three... <laughs> oh, no, just wait a minute. Seriously, there's a punchline coming. Oh, please. What just, policy just, was it? I mean, just, oh, no, I know. Oh, just wait a second, guy. I need to get this out. The last <laughs> three general elections, what Labour policy was it that perturbed you so much you decided you'd rather be lied to by Boris Johnson? It's not even policy. No, no, it's but I do just want one. I just want one. Uh, just, they're going to buy it back. The water, the gas, the gonna, railway, and, and the what, post office, and, and, and why That's do you mental. not? Why do you not like that then? Because ridic- we couldn't run it. They couldn't run it when they had it. So why do they think they're going to buy it back and do a better job now? It's well, mental. I haven't haven't don't they spend just all my billions? Don't take all have, my money and waste it on something they, that we used to own and couldn't run. Aren't they talking before. about taking the oh. railways back into national ownership under Grant Shapps and the was it the East Coast? That's already I, happened, hasn't it? Have they not announced? James, I'm a heating engineer, mate. I, I can't keep track of everything. But you've but, got very strong views on why you like being well, lied to. It, it, but the Conservatives have already... I think they'll probably flog it off to, you know, and give a bunch of money to a, to an organisation run by someone like Richard Branson or, or, or something like that. I understand yeah. why you prefer that. But the idea that no, nationalisation... No, that's, that's, well, that's the trouble. That's, that's how bad Gary, it is. just make pause a minute. The pause. voters will suffer that. Yeah, will but, suffer but, that. but all you've got is that, vote. is it? It's the na- alternative. Yeah, OK, mate. That's it. I'm not again. I'm not, I'm not arguing with you. No uh, yeah, I get, I get it. That's so, awful. Uh, and how are they going to feel? Do you think the people you describe when they realise they've been lied to, they're going to feel fine? I, I couldn't agree with you more. No, we're going to feel a bit sick. But the alternative oh. is a Labour Party. The alternative is a Labour Party, which, apart from some broad, tabloid, diluted description of a nationalisation program, you haven't got a Scooby Doo whether they're coming or going. And do you know what happens now, Gary? No, they're, but they're personality. They're no, I know they it's all about their personality, David but they're not scumbags. As the leader. No, and that was... turned him over. Yeah, okay. Him in the back. Gary, Gary, in. Gary, Gary! If David Miliband had been leader, mate, you'd have been persuaded that he was a scumbag as well. It's what they do no, I to... I would have voted for him. Of course would've you would. I would have voted for him. Yeah, all right. And if you go back, what's, what was his name? The fellow who died. He was awesome. He, he was the last decent Labour leader. Okay, mate. Uh, Smith, John Smith. Yeah, was it, where did he stand on nationalisation? Look... As a personality, as a credible leader of this country. <laughs> Just have a great day. We're actually on the same team. What happens now is I get bombarded with abuse from Corbyn fans saying it's my fault that people like Gary um, ended up believing that Corbyn was a wrong one. I think Corbyn was a disaster for this country and for the Labour movement, not least because he's ushered Boris Johnson and Brexit onto the... Um, Uh, stage in a way that they would not have been enjoying if it wasn't for his absolute inadequacy. But there it is. So here is Boris Johnson courting racist votes by pretending he was going to be, quote, tougher on immigration, revealing already, it's not even February, that £30,000 stuff. Now, (laughs) you can't believe you fell for that. We're not doing that. So I'm delighted, sort of. Delighted, tempered with disgusted. If you fell for this, why aren't you cross? Whereabouts in China are you, Luke? Jiangsu Nantong. That's right, James, making Nantong famous today at least. <laughs> You'll all know about it then. Is that, is, that a, is, just... is that a Leeds accent that I detect? Yeah, it is. Welcome to Yorkshire <laughs> abroad. Well, I don't know why. Possibly a little bit of 
low level snobbery on my part. I wasn't expecting to, to hear my dad's accent on the other end of the phone when we crossed live to China. Um, what's going on, Luke? What, what, what is the latest? And I'm glad you're in good spirits, but it can't be much fun. Well, I mean, you have ups and downs. I'm taking it day to day. Like, just imagine the whole of England is just shut down. Like, you know, you want to take your National Express to go home to yeah. see your family. It's just, you just cannot. That, that's all stopped. There's selected fast trains running. You can you can take a plane, but you you imagine the vast majority of Chinese people can't afford these planes. Right. So, I mean, we can take it back to where it started, like the day just before Chinese New Year. Yes. Everybody's gone home to always the cities go dead, right? So after that, it goes a few days and then people start coming back to, 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 to where they are, where they're from, to start work again, which was supposed to be today. Now, the government has said, right, nobody is to work until the 10th. So there's another 10 days. Everybody's just on a public holiday. They've just been told to stay indoors. There's just like that's. And when, that's when you say is, stay indoors, do, do you mean, li- I mean, literally don't leave your flat or your home? No, I mean, what I'm seeing now is a progression where people are slowly starting to come out right. and, you know, go for an evening walk. But, you know, five days ago, it was just me out. Like, I'm like, this is unbelievable. If you want a cultural experience, you're not going to get this anywhere in the world other than if it's like some kind of war. Well, it's right? like being the star of 28 Days Later, I imagine. Or yeah, some, some like zombie apocalypse. Around, just like, like, for example, Starbucks closed. Starbucks is never closed. <laughs> it, it, it closes early on Chinese New Year Eve, right? Yes. So it, it, to see what's going on is just immense. You don't like, sound if, scared. If a, a, lot of, a lot of people here listening will be a little bit surprised that you don't sound more scared. Now, that might be a result of the reporting here being perhaps a little bit more excitable than the reporting there or a little bit more accurate than the reporting there. But have you been scared at all? Oh, yeah. When oh. it first hit... I was like, what on the... So, so the, the day of Chinese New Year, I went to my gym. There's a notice on the door. It's closed. What? I'm like, eh? I can't, I can't go and exercise. I'm trapped. Like, what am I doing here? Get out now. I'm looking at flights. My family's saying, come home, come home, come home, get out. And then you start to think, well, why on earth would I want to go sit on a plane with 200 other people? And I'm going to get it then. And then bring it back to England. So everybody hates me. I'm going to have to self-quarantine anyway, I? so I can't go see. You know, my best mate, Wes, he's just had a new kid. He's not going to want to see me, is he? You can't like, come here with your you coronavirus. Can't, I can't worse. This is why we voted for Brexit. We don't want you coming over here with your dodgy diseases. What are you playing at? Outrageous behaviour. But, um... I, 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 well, exactly. The, you know, I even thought of this, right? So, for example, if you're Chinese and all these foreigners are getting sent off, you think, well... We're in it together. You, you don't want to be going around spreading it. I'm thinking, you know, like, in the UK, when mad cow disease happened, if everyone that, you know, from EU went, right, suddenly, oh, we're off back. Could you yes. imagine what they'd all be saying? Oh, it's all right for them, free NHS while they're here, but as soon as it kicks off, we're on first plane out of here? Well, I don't think so. You know, you've got to... You've got to stay and just just see what's going through. It's, well, I, I mean, I, admi- I admire your resolve, I suppose, but there, there is a certain logic in taking the exit if it is available, regardless of your origins or your or, 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 or your loyalties. But uh, but I completely understand where you're coming from. Do, what's the expat community like where you are? Is it you may not know, you may not be part of it, but I mean, it, well, Nantong Nantong's not a huge city. So, no, I know. But I say it's not a huge city. There's seven million people that live here, right? So <laughs> it's all relative. Look, it's, it's all relative, isn't it? It's all relative. It, yeah. So I rung my mate yesterday from England, and yeah. he's like, "What? You're going out?" He's like, <laughs> "What? I, I've only been out like in the last seven days, two times." I, I, you've got to find life hacks. You know, things are closed, so my gym was closed. Well, I thought, well. There's only going to be one of a place that can't close that's got a gym, a go hotel. Yes. There's people here, they're trapped here, they can't go anywhere. No. So there I go, having a little, oh, yeah, this gym's open, nice. I'm making some new friends, aren't I? There's that's, new hey, people hey, that hey, when life, that I have seen before. When life gives you lemons, Luke, you make lemonade, mate. I can tell it, sh- it shines off you. It really does. How, how, and <laughs> In fact, I'm interested in you now, not just the coronavirus. How did you end up there? Oh, Jim. Well, I mean, I've been coming in off on and off coming yeah. to China for a few years. Right. Um, but then I found Nantong, 
And basically, like, I'm a kindergarten teacher. But, okay. Um, I've got a Chinese grandma that, like, basically looks after my every needs. It's like it's like being an escort, but for, like, a 60-year-old woman. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, She's just... obviously looking out for me. <laughs> so you're, like, you're living the uh, life, and is she all right? I mean, are you looking after her as well at this difficult time? Well, she's fine. We live in separate houses because yes. I won't be able to handle, you know, it's hard enough when I go on holiday, you know, in these five-star hotels, entertaining <laughs> her and stuff. But, you know, she said, I- I'm, I'll always say, oh, you know, I'll do exactly what my government said. So right. if they say, you're coming home, I'm coming home, right? Right, yes. And she's like, no, it's fine to stay here. It's fine to stay. You know, she'll put it off saying, oh, you know, it's, there's cases in Japan now. Well, I'm like, well, there's more cases in Nantong than there is in the whole of Japan. Yeah, so we've got two it, in Newcastle kind of... as well. I don't know if you're aware of this. There's two in Newcastle that have just been yeah. identified. And we've got the plane you refer to is uh, everybody on it's been put into quarantine in the Wirral. So briefly, Luke, wh- why were you not on that plane? I, 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 un- I mean, you could have got on it. And I understand the argument about not, you know, rats leaving a sinking ship type of thinking. But could how hard would it have been you... How hard would it have been for you to get on that aeroplane? Well, I could have got on it, but then you could think, well, who wants to spend two weeks trapped away in, in the stu- hospital? You're where, stuck in your flat, man. What, that's, like, <laughs> that's no life, is it? Like here, at least, you know, the thing is, I've, I've found out, you know, done research, and I'm seeing that I'm healthy. I need to stay healthy, hence going to the gym, yes. eating fruit, eating soup. Yeah, and when you're staying healthy, that means that your immune system's good. So well, you, if yes. You, if you're staying like that, then if you get it, then it's, it, you know... Well, you mentioned, I know, you, 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 you make a very compelling case. You mentioned that you've made a lot of new friends, not least in, in the hotel gym. I can tell you, you've made quite a lot of few new friends in my... Uh, my universe as well. I'll just read you a few. Is Luke on Twitter, James? Please get him back. In the same way that Thursday afternoon hosts Mystery Hour, can we have Luke from China report every Friday from now on? Uh, this Leeds bloke is the best man in the world. Brilliant call. That's from Edward, Matt and Simon. Gary says love his accent. Sean says love this lad from Leeds. Uh, Wayne says this lad is a legend. Cheerful um, in the face of the plague. I'd love a pint with him. Give him a round of applause. Um, and, and so it continues. So, you know, every cloud... Well, I won't be having a pint because I'm on detox after Christmas, right? That's the part of coming back to China after Christmas. <laughs> and, you know, you turn up. Even the guy at my gym, were like, oh, my God, you're fat now. But just say it as it is here, don't they? So, I, like, I don't oh, know. Like, oh, I, yeah, thought thanks, Leeds, I thought Leeds I was quite plain speaking, Luke. I didn't realise you had to go to China for it. Well, we're at least a little bit more subtle, aren't we? You know, if you say it first, then it's fine to comment on it. But here, he was straight on it. He was like, oh, yeah. I was like, well, it's Christmas, isn't it? Carp Central, you let yourself go. Well, you're a legend and you've made a lot of friends, myself hold included. Hold on, hold go, on. Oh, the what? final one, go I on. need to just say this, James. You are my hero. Oh, stop so it. Stop if it. I do, if it gets me, then at least <laughs> I have got this chance to speak to you. It, honestly, James, I time my day around you. So the fact that I leave a, on an afternoon, me. I'll leave a coffee shop at 6 p.m. so I can walk home when you start. You know, I'm straight in that. I just, oh, I yeah. love you. So yes. thank you so much. Oh, mate, I love you, you too. Know, all the bre- you you told me about the whole of Brexit, and I just, I basically worship you. You're no, not stop it. to stop leave. It. But stop it now. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's it. I'm not going to call you ever again now. I'm done. My life's made. The dream came well, we true. Might, we, might call, we might call you Luke in China, but... Because we are, uh, well, we, we we need your positivity and, and optimism, your honesty, and, uh, well, me at least, your adulation. So thanks ever so much, mate. <laughs>